First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates the bring about specifics and the root based on value of natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the airplane that your thoughts transmit. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates the bring about specifics and the root based on value of natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the airplane that your thoughts transmit. Get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. How are they, Washington East? Peace, peace, brother L. Hey, peace, brother Fahim. I mean, I mean, brother Aline. Hey, how you doing tonight? I'm doing fine, brother. How you doing? All right, all right, all right. We're gonna get it popping. Um, okay. I made Wi-Fi, so that's a good thing. So we can uh, wrap things up for tonight. And um, for those who don't know, you're listening to. First of all, the radio. All right. So um, before we get into tonight's discussion, all right, before we get into tonight's discussion, um, matter of fact, let me put up some info. And how you doing tonight, Brother Al? I'm doing well, Brother. How, 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 how's the brother doing? Doing good, doing good, doing good. All right, all right. Outstanding. All right. I know you wanted to build on some things. Um, but before we get to what you're going to build on tonight, um, okay. I have a special, I have a special guest that is coming on. She hasn't oh, been okay. on in a while. Yeah, that's, that's a good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, 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 Ty Queen, um, you know, she, she had her own radio on um, for years and the sister's phenomenal. She's been on here at least three times already. So. Mm-hmm. You know, we getting ready to bring her on because uh, she has so much knowledge and information. We got to um, bring her on and see, you know, what's going on in the world today. Um, All right. Thing. So um, let me try to bring her on here. Greetings, peace. Peace. What's good? Hey, here we go. All right. All right. All right. We got the sound. We got the sound. <laughs> All right. How you doing tonight, got it? I'm good. How y'all feeling? Doing very well, Queen. Doing doing very well. That's what's up. All right. Indeed. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, what you got for us tonight, for those who 
are definitely peeping the info. Mm-hmm. I'm building on. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Tonight I'm going to be breaking down the heart chakra uh, in a unique way. We're going to be focusing on the heart chakra as a gateway to infinite abundance. And what that means and how we can achieve that energy and how we can really begin to uh, break down the illusion of the physical world, the physical issues that are blocking us from realizing our highest potential. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it. So that is necessary. Yes, it is. (laughs) Definitely, definitely. And the thing about it is it's not realized how important the heart chakra is. The heart chakra is actually the one of the main chakras, and it's the only chakra that can actually regenerate and heal all of the other chakras. So if that doesn't speak to how powerful this chakra point is, it's an amazing place uh, that you're uh, going to want to begin your spiritual journey with. A lot of people get caught up with the third eye chakra, they're like, I want to get my third eye popping, and there's nothing wrong with having your third eye popping, but we want to get all the chakras aligned, so that's really what we're going to focus on a lot tonight, okay? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, cool. So, of course, I want to introduce myself for those who may not be acquainted with me. My name is Ashante Tay Queen Fernandes. Some know me as Tay Queen, some know me as Ashante, but however you know me, Just know me. (laughs) I am an intuitive healer. I am a meditation and spiritual coach. I'm a professional herbalist. I'm a Reiki practitioner, a crystal healer. And basically, I'm an all-around holistic lifestyle consultant. I am the owner of Gemini Brand, which was formerly Gemini Creations, which is now uh, evolving into Gemini Whole Health and Wellness. And I've been serving our community for five years now. Uh, and counting with different holistic um, mediums of healing like crystals to spiritual baths to any and everything, you name it, we uh, we proprietor it and we sell it and we also uh, make it available to people who don't have access to these things online. So that's what I do uh, in that vein. So y'all can get a little bit that's familiar. A lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Gemini, so I have to do a lot. <laughs> I can't just do one thing. I've got to do it all. <laughs> well, well, yes. well, I can't say that. My moon is Gemini, so I'm in the same boat. Mm-hmm. Right. You already know how it go. Okay. Yes. So um, the question that I really want to bring up and I want to pose to everybody, and this is a really important question, and I want you guys to peep this question and how I specifically phrase it, and I want you to ask yourself this question and see if you're ready to hear the impact of what it actually is saying. So my question for everybody on the line as well as everybody listening in the live and, of course, after is, are you willing to peel back the illusion of pain to see the treasures of the heart? That's going to be the biggest question that we're going to be asking ourselves while we go throughout this program and then at the end, we're going to really get into it and uh, do some powerful readings. Uh, I want to bring in my cards and give you guys some information at the end as well. Uh, but for now, let's just keep that question burning on our minds while we listen to the presentation, okay? So I'm going to break right. down a little bit of what the heart chakra is. And for those who aren't familiar with the chakra system, the chakra system is a light system of vortexes of energy that sit inside our etheric bodies, so our spiritual bodies. Um, And these specific vortexes have different functions in our spiritual realities as well as our physical realities, and they affect us in different ways. So that, with that being said, it also affects the, um, indirectly impacts the physical body through the endocrine system. So each chakra has a gland in the physical body that it correlates to. So chakras are a very integral part of not only just spiritual awareness, but uh, physical health as well. So that's one aspect of what chakras are. And the heart chakra in and of itself is a really beautiful space. As I was speaking on earlier, it's an extremely powerful chakra. It's the only chakra that can actually heal and regenerate all of the other chakras. 
from its energy. So you can kind of look at it as a source point or the zero point of the chakra system and the light body. Um, the colors for the heart chakra are green, pink, turquoise, white, and gold. And this is energy that's a little bit less known about the heart chakra because I'm going to get into some of the unconventional or un, a little bit less known or less mainstream aspects about the heart chakra. So there are actually two heart chakras. Um, there is the lower heart chakra and there is the upper heart chakra, also known as the thymus chakra. And um, the lower is the most common chakra. It's actually associated with the color green. Its musical note is D, and the mantra is Yam. Um, the affirmation is I love, and the function, uh, it actually functions as a gateway between the higher and lower consciousness. So your heart chakra sits um, in between the lower and the higher self. And that's where you kind of get into the mythology of Ma'at and weighing your heart and seeing, you know, where you're going to go in the afterlife. That's really dealing with the context of your nature, your lower and your higher nature. And your heart is like the meeting place. This is where you are really um, weighing the energy. If you can't come beyond the heart chakra in your consciousness or you're not activated beyond the heart chakra, you're really not living in your higher self. You're not living in your higher awareness. You're not living in your highest potential. So when people think of the heart space or when they think of love, they kind of only think of it in the romantic terms. And I really want you to go beyond what your physical associations of love are and understand love as a vibration, love as an energy, love as a frequency, beyond love just being an emotion. Because love in truly in essence is the propelling uh, component behind creation. So it's a really powerful energy. So it's something that's really amazing to tap into. And as we are taught, it functions and heart healing. We can deal with a, a relationship as well as abundance and uh, growth as well as healing the body as well. And so those are some of the common functions of the heart chakra. But it really, like I was saying earlier, functions much beyond and far beyond that actual reality. Um, and I want you to, again, begin to shift your perspective of what love is, what the heart space is, and what relationships are in true essence. So once the heart chakra is entered and awakened, it will basically unlock a sacred chamber. So inside of every person there's a sacred space. Um, and some people are aware of this space, some people are not aware of this space, but it's basically the seat of your innocence. Like a lot of children, this space is very active for them. That's why they have high imaginations. And sometimes if you're ever around children, they're very healing beings, uh, uh, especially healthy children. Uh, so you ever, if you're ever like down or sad or going through something, sometimes a child will just sense that there's something wrong with you and just run up to you, give you a hug, and run away. <laughs> You'll be like, how'd you know I, need that? I needed that hug? And they're just so empathic and they're so in tune with that aspect of themselves because that part of themselves is pure. That sacred place hasn't been tainted within them. So that energy is an extremely powerful energy, and that's actually the energy you want to recultivate in yourself. Um, now, I'm not saying you want to be childish, but having childlike qualities uh, will allow you to really be a very spiritually powerful person because children are extremely spiritually powerful in that capacity, as we observe. So I'm going to start to break down a little bit of the energy of the upper heart chakra. Uh, we'll get into that, and then I'll start to really give you guys some key elements and components that are going to be really, really integral uh, into your awareness and heightening your awareness and allowing you to really open up abundance. And when I'm saying abundance, let me clarify that for some people, because some people use abundance as, as an interchangeable term for financial success. Now, abundance and financial success are not the same, but they are related, and they can be related. So you can have material abundance. This is something that is very beautiful. I'm not against it. 
um, at all, <laughs> right, <laughs> by right. any means. But okay. what I am, but I want you, I implore you to look beyond just the physical or the material aspects of abundance to really be able to pierce beyond that because there's abundance in so many different forms. Abundance in finance and abundance in material is not evil, nor is it good. People polarize it. They're like, I either hate money or I'm ruled by money. There's, that's not healthy. You need to be balanced, okay? You need money for what you need it for. <laughs> and it's, ama- it's nice and wonderful when you have enough of it to live comfortably because it is a tool, right? But at the same time, you should not be ruled by it nor obsessed with it. So that's the energy there. So we're, when we're talking about abundance, we're talking about holistic abundance. That means abundance in your relationships, abundance in your finances, abundance in your health, abundance in every area of your life. Because trust me, you don't want one in one area without it in the other areas. Because when you do have that, it's still imbalanced. You can have all the money in the world but be sick and you can't do nothing fun with your money, right? (laughs) Or you can't really enjoy having that financial success. So you want to have it in every area. Or you could have an abundance of love and relationships and you have this really great energy in your relationships, but that financial stress can be still a burden. So you want it to be balanced. You don't want it to just be in one area and not the other areas. You want that abundance to be balanced. And where it's going to really become balanced in is when you do the work in your heart space. So that brings us back to what we're talking about here with the heart chakra, okay? So now let's get into a little bit of the upper heart chakra, which is the sacred space that I was talking about. So inside every man, woman, and child, there is a sacred place, that an inner sanctum that really honestly and truly cannot be violated. This inner place is a place where you store your hopes, your aspirations, your dreams, your goals, things that you would like uh, to happen in your life, And just honestly, it goes even beyond this particular lifetime. This is a space that encompasses the entirety of your past lifetimes, your present lifetimes, and goes even beyond all of the time-space reality that we're aware of. And it's a very beautiful place. The upper heart chakra, or the thymus chakra, as I previously mentioned, actually deals with the colors of pink, turquoise, white, and gold, and is referred to as the higher chakra. The functions of this particular chakra is as a gateway and balance point between intention and emotion. So this is where the emotions and the intentions meet each other. That's the point of every ritual, FYI. That's the point of any type of spiritual work that you're doing is to allow the cultivation of that emotion or that energy in motion, right, to meet intention. And that's where it happens. So this space is a very, very, uh, very sacred space. It's also a very, very um, highly magically, highly spiritually charged zone in the body, okay, as well as the spiritual body and the physical body in all aspects, okay. So if... Let's say if this area had a frequency, it'd probably be 528 hertz. If um, anybody's familiar with sulfagio frequencies, 528 hertz is the the frequency of miracles. So that would be what happens when you charge emotion and intention and you balance them correctly. Miracles can happen. Things can shift instantaneously. Instantaneous healing, instantaneous abundance, instantaneous openings, um, instantaneous realizations, instantaneous awareness, enlightenment, all those different types of things can actually come into being when you charge these two particular aspects and put them together. Again, like I was saying earlier, it's the seat of your faith, of your hope, of the aspirations, all those positive things that unfortunately we tend to lose as we go through life. That's why a lot of times we'll associate the heart with the context of love because even in the physical or mundane aspect of love, um, if we've been hurt or somebody has been hurt 
romantically or they've been hurt in their uh, family relationships, a lot of times those centers will close down inside of them. They'll begin to lose hope. They'll begin to lose faith. They'll begin to lose these tools, which are really now, of course, when I talk about these things, I'm not saying, well, if you just hope and they have some faith, then everything will change. No. I'm talking about intentionally utilizing those principles as a form of manifestation creation. Okay? I want you to learn how to utilize these principles so that they can actually assist you in a process. It's all a process. Everything is a process. Everything has a reason or a logical, logistic aspect to it. It's not a mystery. It's not just, oh, I, if I just have some faith and hope. No, it's not, it's not like that. Right. It's mm-hmm. beyond that. It's a cultivation of an understanding, holding a specific frequency inside of your awareness to attract that same like higher frequency into your auric field, into your uh, reality, into your personal world, Okay. So that's what we're talking about here. Once this space is awakened, it connects us to the highest realms of heaven, nirvana, self-awareness, higher self, however you want to put it, it connects you to that space. This is the gateway in which you are opening and activating and utilizing to bring you into that higher awareness of yourself. So the inner self uh is basically the infinite supply of divine love energy, okay? It's going to connect you back to source. There is, there is an infinite supply of everything in this universe. The first thing that we have to break in our mindsets before we can really step into living in a mindset of abundance, of prosperity, of holistic wellness, of healing, whatever it is that you're looking for in your life, wherever there's lack, The first thing to breaking that lack mindset is really understanding that there is no such thing as lack. There is an abundance of everything in the universe. Everything that we need is there. There's no shortage or there's no shortage shortage of um, air. (laughs) There's no shortage of water. There's no shortage of these things now. You know, people are tainting these things, people are polluting these things, but there's no shortage of the essential components that are necessary for us to propel life, for us to continue forward in being and living. There's no shortage of money either. So I don't know why we continue to act as if there are, there is, but there is no shortage of money. There's enough out here for everybody to be able to have what they need in every area. There's no shortage of homes, no shortage of anything. So when we are unable to access these things, there's two reasons why. There is a larger uh, system in place that has created a mindset or a system or structure around exploiting your idea of lack, okay? And then there is the idea that you're continuing to agree to, which is the lack mindset. So that's the reason why you experience shortages, why you experience um, any type of lack in any way, love, romantic love, uh, happiness um, in any uh, social uh, relationships, financial relationships, whatever, in any particular area. That's why you're experiencing that is because you are agreeing to experiencing that on some particular level, okay? So I'm going to remind us about the question. Remember the question I asked you earlier. I said, are you willing to peel back the illusion of pain to see the treasures of your heart? I want to explain this a little bit more. So what I'm saying here is are you willing to let go of the illusions around you? I'm not saying that your pain doesn't matter. I'm not saying that you haven't gone through real things. But are you willing to let the emotional vibration of that pain go so that you can see the lesson of what those experiences are here to teach you? A lot of times what's blocking the heart space for a lot of people are those emotions, those traumas, those specific situations that they were not prepared to deal with and they are still not prepared to deal with and so that they allow those particular pains to dictate how they view life and how they see themselves. You are never beyond repair. You are never in such a state of disarray 
depression, anger, hurt, lack, uh, trauma. You're never in such a state that you cannot rebound, that you cannot recover from. And I don't believe in that. So particularly for my healing philosophy, I believe that everything can be healed. Now, are you going to take those steps to heal it? Mm, That's the question. Because sometimes it's going to require you getting down and dirty and going to those places that you don't want to go to. But I digress for a little bit. So are you willing (laughs) to go to those particular places and say, I no longer agree to that story. I no longer agree to the pain story in my life. I no longer agree to the story that I'm ugly or that I'm not worthy or that I'm not smart enough or that I'm not good enough or that I'm not attractive enough or that I'm not whatever it is. I no longer agree to that story, and I now change that story to allow myself to transcend that. And within that story, there are always hidden some jewels, some gems that are there for you to mine. Out of every painful situation, you have grown. You have created some level of wisdom. Now you can ignore the wisdom or you can use the wisdom. It's your choice. But that's the question. So are you willing to peel back the illusion of pain to see the treasures of your heart? Okay? So now I want to get into the aspect of how the heart chakra or how the heart center is that gateway. So... As before mentioned, the heart chakra is the gateway into your higher self. And once the higher and lower heart chakras are unlocked, it will open an inner dimension of endless and unlimited abundance. This is your inner world comprised of your hopes, your aspirations, your dreams, and endless possibilities, and the entire sum of your lifetimes. So... This will allow for divine and spiritual unions to be attracted into your life. This will allow for karmas to be broken, uh, cycles to be broken. All types of amazing things can really transform and take place in your heart chakra. Now, I know you're like, okay, that's dope, but how do I do that, though? (laughs) How do I really heal that? How do I balance that? Now, I'm not by any means saying that no that or criticizing anyone's levels of self improvement. I'm actually a really big supporter of therapy. But you can spend years in therapy and never actually hit on these particular points. You can spend years in different external systems uh of religion or spirituality and never hit these particular points. You can journal till your face turns blue, listen to every self-help guru. You can do all of that stuff and never still hit these particular points. Now, I'm not saying that those things aren't productive things to do. I'm not saying that these aren't things that can't help you. They can, but you need to couple it with the understanding of how the heart actually works, how emotions actually work, and what is the science of really balancing these spaces for yourself. Because like I was saying earlier, it isn't a theory. It really is a process that does happen inside of you, okay? So the lower heart chakra, in order to heal that, or the, uh, the context of what you'll be healing when you're healing the lower heart chakra will be dealing with your relationships with nature, your uh, relationships towards others, and ex- exercising compassion towards others, okay? So that's the lack of, so that's the opposite of apathy, which shuts that particular space down. External relationships and material abundance. Those are some of the most commonly associated aspects of healing the lower sh- heart chakra. So the frequency that would really activate, and I'm into frequencies, if you haven't noticed, Sophageal frequencies, uh, binaural beats, all of that stuff. The science that is behind that is literally the science of the blueprint of the universe. When everything was created, it was created first with sound. And then the material world that we now see sits on top of that particular frequency. So once we learn how to manipulate frequencies, we can actually change ourselves from the most primal essence of who we are, okay? So 432 hertz is, one of, is a frequency that's really going to resonate with the lower heart chakra. 
and that's going to allow for those energies to be transmuted. So you're going to listen to that type of frequency, use the mantra of YAM, or, uh, yeah, use the mantra of YAM. You can use the color green, and you can use a crystal like jade or green quartz or any type of green stone, uh, malachite, um, dip taste. All of these stones are really amazing for this particular area. And you want to meditate with these, these components for at least 10 minutes for seven days using all of those tools to unlock your lower, ch- your lower heart chakra, okay? So, again, that's the 432 hertz frequency, the mantra of yam, the color green, and the crystal of jade. For 10 minutes, you want to sit down, you might say the mantra yam or listen to the mantra yam. You might also listen to the frequency 432 hertz, and you want to sit down for at least 10 minutes, hold that stone, hold that green stone in your hand. You can, use, you can wear the color green. You can surround yourself with the color green in your surroundings. You can take uh, fabrics that are green and surround yourself with them. That's utilizing color therapy frequency therapy or sonic therapy, um, sacred word, as well as crystal healing. It's utilizing all of that together. Now, that's a powerful combination. It's a basic practice. And again, like I said, you want to do that for 10 minutes for at least seven days to really help to balance that space. Seven days because that's how long it's going to take before you see a real shift in that area, and that will really help you to solidify and cement that change in that space. So the higher heart chakra, because anything you do to the lower heart chakra, you want to do to the higher heart chakra, which many people aren't even aware of exists, but that's why I'm making you aware of this space of yourself. The higher heart chakra healing is going to look like relationships with yourself and the divine being cleared, connection between emotion and intention being opened, opening up past life karmas, and balancing and transmuting these karmas, Um, opening the door for your twin flame or spiritual and divine unions, okay? Now, those particular spiritual and divine unions may not always be romantic, but they are an essential aspect of your soul's evolution. So in the higher heart chakra, we're really talking about those uh, summing up and coming into awareness of those relationships in a higher state or in a higher principle. And the frequency for the higher heart chakra is 528 hertz. The mantra is Rama. The color is pink, turquoise, and white. Uh, the crystal is rose quartz or desert rose selenite. Okay. And those are two really powerful stones that you'd want to use for this particular area. So you're going to meditate with these tools, again, for at least 10 minutes over those seven days. Just like you did with the lower shock, the lower heart chakra, you're going to do this with the higher heart chakra uh, for at least seven days. And the final stages of this evolution, the final stages of healing and balancing these places for yourself uh, you're going to want to at least, you're going to really want to fast, okay? The reason why I say fasting is incredibly integral in really going in and doing the emotional work that you need to do to unlock these deeper realms of yourself is because a lot of times we're feeding our emotions through food. So we're numbing ourselves. We're numbing ourselves through uh, a lot of people numbing through different addictions, uh, but the most socially acceptable addiction is food, yeah. okay? Some people are doing it through uh, alcohol. Some people are doing it through uh, substance abuse. Some people are doing it through uh, sex or other relationships. Some people are doing it through shopping or different other things, whatever it is. Whatever your issues are, fast and abstain from those issues, but then add food on top of it because food is going to keep you connected to the physical realm. I want you to go deeper beyond that. I want you to go deeper and higher, higher into yourself and deeper into your, uh, your heart space, deeper into your awareness of self. So in order to do that, you're going to either need to liquid fast. If you're an advanced person who can fast for long periods of time, liquid fast. If you're not, fast on raw foods, 
raw foods don't take as much of your energetic, uh, uh, the energy from the digestive process. It's easy to, for your body to break down raw foods. It's much easier to break down raw foods than it is to break down cooked foods, okay? So you're going to want to fast on raw, or, uh, raw foods or liquids for at least three to seven days. Now, if you, can, if you can muster the three days, great. If you can go all the way and do the seven days, even better. But just go, do where, start where you can. Start where you are, okay? And you want to pray at least three times a day, however you pray, by setting your intentions, by saying actual prayers, or by just speaking uh, your intentions to the divine or to the universe or however it is that you pray. I don't care how you pray, just do it. Meditation, three times a day at least. You want to sit down and balance and still the energies as well as you want to stir and cultivate the energies, okay? Um, you can read holy scriptures. You can read anything that's going to entice your mind to a higher vibration. So this is spiritual text of any sort. Now, I don't. you're not just limited to anything that's of a religion. This could be books that um, teach you about crystals. This could be books that teach you about chakras. This could be any type of spiritual text that's going to awaken and incite a higher vibration of understanding inside of yourself, okay? And you want to start each morning off. Every time you, every time you wake up for however long you're choosing to fast, I want you to wake up each morning and I want you to listen to a specific mantra called the Mool Mantra, M-U-L Mantra or M-U-O-O-L Mantra. Now, this mantra right here, <laughs> this, is a, this is akin to, like, spiritual. It's like, honestly, it's that stuff. <laughs> this mantra is going to really shift and transform your perception of reality. The more that you say it, especially first thing when you wake up in the morning, you're going to change and shift your mind from the mindset of, oh, my God, um, I was abused when I was a child, and these are the things that happened to me that are really, really still bothering me to this day, okay? You're going to shift your mind from, oh, my God, I'm in the middle of a divorce, and it's really hard on me, and my children are suffering. You're going to shift your mind from, oh, my God, I have no money, I don't, have, I don't have, understand how I'm going to pay all my bills. I don't understand any of that. You're going to shift your mind from the lower frequencies of those realities, those very real, very impactful, emotionally uh, abrasive realities, and you're going to shift your mindset from I am these situations to everything in the universe changes. Everything in the universe is in a constant state of flux. And if that is so then I, too, can change these situations around me. This is going to open up those infinite possibilities. This is going to tap you directly into that particular gateway, that particular point. I work, everything I teach, I live, everything I live, I teach. What do I mean by that? I'm giving you what I've done to unlock this within myself. I'm working with clients consistently on a daily basis, uh, five uh, five days a week <laughs> working with my clients, right? And every single time I give them this formula, every single time I give them this mantra to utilize, now one person has to come back to me and said, oh, my God, I had a dream of my ancestors. Oh, my God, I saw this vision of me as my higher self. Oh, my God, this, 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 and that. Because it opens up the realm, that realm, that gateway that I'm talking to you about, that inner part of yourself that you've been cut off from because you've been living as a physical human being. And let's just be honest, this shit is depressing sometimes. <laughs> okay? So right. you need to elevate yourself out of the mundane vibration of every day, wake up, uh, wash my ass, go to work. Okay? You need to elevate yourself out of that same routine of just every day being human, every day being human. How do you do that? You break that cycle by breaking up with the things that are engaging you in that particular mindset, in that construct. The food is keeping you there, okay? That physical comfort is keeping you there. That particular mindset 
is keeping you there. That trauma is keeping you there. Break up with those things because they're not the true aspect of who you are. You're beyond that. You're beyond time. You're beyond physical space. You're beyond those realities. You're existing on multiple dimensional levels right now as we're talking. You're not just who you are. You're beyond that. Okay? So if you're beyond that reality and all you're seeing in yourself are the flaws, are the hatred, are the emotions, are the anger, are the pain that you've left inside of yourself, that you've let there, that you've left there to fester inside of yourself, you're never going to move beyond this place. You're never going to move beyond this space. And I don't care if you win the lottery tomorrow, you're never going to be happy. I don't care if you find the man of your dreams tomorrow, the woman of your dreams tomorrow, you're never going to be happy. Because that space has to be activated before you can get to that place of joy, before you can get to that place of peace, before you can get to that place of balance. So open this space inside of yourself, okay? So this particular system that I just gave you, this formula that I just gave you, it's one of many formulas. You can tweak this to your own particular uh, liking or the or do only pieces of it that resonate with you. I don't care what you do, but get out of the mindset of the mundane reality and come into a higher awareness of who you are beyond just the physical. That's the gateway to your abundance. That's the gateway to everything that you've been looking for outside of yourself. It already is inside of you. Everything that you've ever wanted is inside of you already, and it's just sitting there like, so I guess we're never going to get used this lifetime because this person's still crying about what happened when they were 15. <laughs> well, I guess we're never going to be activated because this person still focused on the fact that this other person has no interest in them. We could move beyond that. We could attract a sacred divine union to you if you just opened up that aspect of yourself inside. But no, you want to cut yourself off from those things. You want to cut yourself off from your higher lineage, from your ancient ancestors who are there to assist you in this ascension process. So stop doing that. Stop cutting yourself off. And it's not easy. And I know it's not easy because I'm a fucking human being too. And I've been through shit. We all been through shit. <laughs> Ain't not one of us not been through shit. Okay? That's We've right. all been through different things. But it's about getting up and being resilient and continuing to go forward on your path. So if you just don't know how to get there, take that template that I just gave you, apply it to yourself, utilize it as a form of healing, uh, and really move forward. If you need more help than that, reach out to me because that's what I do for a living. Okay, I'm here to assist you uh, in whatever shape, way, or form that I can. Uh, Just really, honestly, at the end of the day, move out of that state of lack and move into your state of abundance. And that's how you're going to really activate that spiritual power within you. Okay. I'm done. (laughs) (laughs) A lot. Yes. So do we have any people on the line with questions or anything like that? Yes, let's see if we can get some callers online here. The number for to call in is 563-999-3738. That is 563-999-3738. All right? Mm-hmm. Um, let's, let's go back over the mantras um, again mm-hmm. so they can um, really do a whole of that, guys. Okay. So the mantra for your higher heart chakra is going to be the Rama Ram Ma Rama You want to say it like that Okay The uh, mantra for your lower chakra is Yam You want to say it Yam You want to hold that M at the end Anytime you're doing a mantra Because that's going to really allow the vibration To penetrate deeper into your reality Um and the last mantra that I gave you is the Mool Mantra. Now, the Mool Mantra is an extremely powerful mantra from the Sikh religion, okay? And it's actually the basic fundamental uh, beginning principles of their sacred texts, or I think it's the, 
the grants or the sun grants. I can't, I don't want to pronounce it wrong, but um, that's it's the beginning opening scriptures in their sacred text, okay? And in their specific practice, what they do is they say this mantra, they'll wake up in the morning, right, wash their face, wash themselves off, um, and then they will go and they'll recite this mantra um, as many times as they can or as many times as they can. I, I normally recommend going for at least 20 minutes with that mantra. And then after reciting the mantra or her listening to the mantra, then you want to study the meaning of the mantra because, of course, the mantra is not in English. <laughs> I forget exactly. It's not Punjabi, but it's a different language that's related to it. It's uh, like uh, one of the derivatives of Sanskrit. And it's an ancient language that's obviously much more advanced than English. So (laughs) you're going to want to study it in many contexts rather than just a direct translation because your direct translation is going to be like, God is amazing, he's wonderful, and then he opens up the... No, no. Go beyond that one. I want you to get to the one that's talking about how you can shift your paradigm, how the uh, the energy of the seer versus or the observer versus the energy of the one who's experiencing life. That's the one I want you to read on. <laughs> and you read on that for another about ten minutes, and that will really help to round out your mantra practice. That I did that for about ten days straight. I, when I tell you, you want to talk about kundalini popping. <laughs> you want to talk about activation of spiritual insight. You want to talk about turning on uh, prophecy, gifts of prophecy, gifts of um, healing, gifts of abundance. That will get you there. And every time I utilize it with a client, it opens that same energy up for them as well. Yeah, so those are That's the mantras funny. that you will use. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, right. So what so, you, uh, you talked about the heart chakra. Oh, okay. Yeah, we talked about the heart chakras. Uh, uh, you said one of the colors of the heart chakras is yellow, and I was just thinking uh, on Sunday I wear some yellow. Uh, I wear maybe something yellow to uh, vibrate the energy with the sun. You know. Mm-hmm. So would that be a little helpful or something I can add on to the as dealing with the hot chocolate, dealing with the yellow color? And the, hot chocolate, um, you know? the color would actually be gold more so than yellow because yellow is really more in the solar plexus chakra. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you could, I would really say in order to really tap into the heart chakra energy, colors like pink, green, turquoise, white, those colors are going to get you there a little bit quicker than the yellow per se. The yellow is not bad. It's just going to tap you into a different energy, which is the solar plexus, solar plexus. which is okay. what you're talking about with the solar energy, which is actually right. a really amazing place as well. If I could do, and I would go for another two hours going over all the chakras mm-hmm. <laughs> with you guys. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's just a different energy sensor. Okay. Okay, mm-hmm. so let's say the green so that would be like on a Friday, like for the, the, the day for Venus? You could do it on a Friday, yes. That will amplify yeah. that work. But honestly, you can do it any any day, any okay. single day, because every day is heart chakra day, okay? okay. <laughs> I, I want you to work on it every day. <laughs> I got you. Mm-hmm. Right, Brother L, you just don't have to wait till March the 17th coming up um, to celebrate um, wearing green. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said you just don't have to wait till March 17th to wear green, brother. Right. Okay. <laughs> mhm. Mhm. Okay. It's the truth. You get it, St. Patrick's Day. March it's right, St. Patrick's 17th. Day. Mhm. <laughs> yeah, St. Patrick. Oh, good that old That was St. also Patrick. my grandfather's birthday, by the way, too. Who is a Pisces? An extremely powerful energy in his own right, and like if you deal with, if you look at the Piscean energy, that's a, actually the energy of the heart chakra and its expansion. That's the energy of the higher heart chakra. You can even talk about that, how that all correlates and goes together as we come into the spring, as we are in March first right now. 
there we're in Pisces season, and Pisces deals with expansive awareness and really uh, the higher or the most high understanding of love, which is what the higher heart chakra is breaking you into anyway. Okay. Mhm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna pull some cards for everybody. Um, okay. I'm gonna pull on the energies of everybody who's listening in, as well as everybody who's on the line. And I'm gonna ask for a reading on how we can begin to heal and clear our heart space. In this coming year and throughout this coming season So Crystal, okay, get in the cards right now How can we heal and transform our sacred heart space Throughout this upcoming year and this upcoming season Okay and that's our third card. And are there any sp- other messages that you would like to share with us, Crystal Oracle? Okay. All right. All right. So the energies that are coming up here, I see the black tourmaline card, which is dealing with protection. But this card goes deeper than just protection. When I see this card, it also talks about ancestral communication, divine love energy, and protection through the space of love. So they want me to really share on that particular aspect with you all that when you shut down your heart space to, quote, unquote, protect yourself from negative experiences, you're not really being effective in your higher mind. When you shut your heart space down, you are dis connecting from the very energy which is most involved in your highest good, which is the divine, which is source, which is creator, which is goddess, which is God, however you look at it, however you call it, that's what that energy is. So when we begin to understand that our love is our protection, that our emotions are our protection, that us being able to open up and be vulnerable and be able to do the work and be able to move forward and heal from the past, That is protective. That is really what we're looking for. So when we try to shut down those energies, when we try to uh, navigate away from those energies, that's really us um, being in our lower self and our lower mind, and that keeps us trapped in that state of mind rather than freeing us from that awareness. So that's the first step to really um, opening up our heart spaces. It's going to be able to open up that sacred space inside of ourselves, okay, without the judgment or the fear or the anger, okay? The next card that comes okay. up for us is Amethyst, which is meditation. And this card is extremely powerful. This is talking about what I was just telling you about. They're coming in, they're reaffirming, they're like, what she just said. <laughs> you mm-hmm. need to sit down and you really need to clear your space with meditation. There is no other way around it. Meditation is how we connect with the universe. Meditation is how we connect with source energy. That's where we go into our inner sanctum and our holy of holies and our inner space and really connect with that creator, creatress, source energy. And when you visit that space, the more often that you visit that space, the more like that space you become. The more centered, the more balanced, the more peaceful, the more divine, the more uh, aware you become of those types of energies. So consistent meditation practices um, is extremely important. Um, And I always say start with attainable goals. If you can only go for five minutes four times a week, I'd rather you start there than giving up because you tried to go for 20 minutes or 40 minutes at one time and you just didn't get to that space. Start small. Continue to practice. It's not easy for everyone. Some people can meditate very easily. Some people can't. But we can all begin a practice that will assist us and allow us to develop that over time. Okay? And the next card that comes up, which is inverted, is life purpose, and it's Amazonite. So Mm -hmm. what it's saying here to me, what this is saying to me, is that there's a lot of people who are listening to this who aren't living their life purpose who are not living in the space of the reason why they are uh, on this planet 
the reason why they've incarnated in this particular lifetime. And a lot of you are living outside of that as a means of survival, as a means of uh, of inability to really feel what that is or being disconnected from that higher reality. But divine, but spirit is saying through this card that it's time for you to realize that. Step into your life purpose. And I don't mean that just in the context of career. I mean that in the context of every day you wake up, what is the reason why you are here on this planet? What are you here to give and contribute to humanity? What are you here to give and contribute to your community? What are you here to give and contribute to your lineage? What are you perpetuating? What is your purpose on this planet? Now, when you come into the awareness of this, nothing can shake you, nothing can stop you, because you know why you're here, you know why you're moving forward. When you live your purpose, it is a divine experience. You become in, I mean, there's no greater, there's no uh, greater experience I've ever had than living the purpose of being a healer, because that's my life purpose. My life purpose is to be here to assist others in healing themselves as well as healing myself and healing my ancestral lineage. And every day when I wake up and I'm living that purpose, I am joyful, I am peaceful, I am happy. I'm so happy, I just sometimes I just smile for no damn reason. I'm just looking at myself, why am I smiling? <laughs> you know, why am I smiling? Okay, there's nothing wrong. Oh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with being happy. There's nothing wrong with being joyful, and that's a problem in our community. People are like, oh, my God, why are you happy, blah, 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 blah. There's too much stuff going on. How do you think that stuff is going to change? It's not going to change the more you scream at it, the more you scowl at it. It's going to change by that inner process inside of yourself realigning because you are the most ancient beings on the planet. So when you change, guess what changes? Everything else. Okay? <laughs> so the next two cards that come up are really uh, potent to me, and they kind of go together. And what I see here is courage and take action. So these two cards, Tiger's Eye and Labradorite, and it says take action within your courage and have the courage to take those action steps to live your life purpose, to start your meditation practice, to be open as a person. Take those steps necessary for you to, to heal. Take those action steps. Begin now. We're, in a, we're about to hit the final, uh, we're in the final um, sign of the zodiac, which is Pisces. Then we hit Aries uh, in the middle of this month, which is the first sign of the zodiac, and that signifies spring, the new year, new awakenings. We're right there. We're about to hit that point where everything's about to pop off and change. Take that action. That's what the Aries energy is about, taking that action and moving forward. So now that we've contemplated what our purpose is, it's going to be time for us to live our purpose. So that's coming up, and that's on the horizon. So just have that courage. You can take those next steps. You can do it. You can change. You can heal. It's not hard. You just have to do it. Okay? So that's the energy that right. came up in the reading. I want to share that with y'all. <laughs> all right. Do we have any questions Definitely at all? Let me see. Let me see. Go to the line. Mm-hmm. Any questions? All right. Come on now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Call in number is 563-999-3738. Five six three nine 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 three seven three eight. All right, give us a call. I'm gonna take right, that as a, a compliment. Call. <laughs> like I'm explaining <laughs> things so well, y'all don't have no questions. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, you know, you hit on a lot of stuff that we talk about a lot of times on the Blog Talk Show, and mm-hmm. uh, about uh, giving over, uh, getting right. over certain things, events that happen to us in, in, the, in the history of our lives, and. Yeah. In order for in order, in order for us to move forward, we have to uh, deal with those things first. Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. you uh, go into somebody to, to someone else's life, well, then you will make them miserable as well. You know, because oh, yeah. you still have not found that inner peace within. Within. Exactly. Uh, you say like uh, you can get. The, have you ever saw the Bruce Lee story? The movie. Mm-mm. The story of Mm-mm. Bruce Lee. 
And when he was a child, he had this horrible dream about this dragon monster, this dragon. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, the child, most people in, in, in the movie theater didn't understand it, but I mm. did. You know, mm. all he was talking, all he was, all he was doing was dreaming, still dreaming about this monster, this dragon, this dragon. And I asked him, I said, uh, what, what do you think that the dragon, who the dragon was? Mm-hmm. Oh, it was something in his dream. I said, yeah, but who was the dragon? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the monster, I said, no. I said, no, brother. The dragon was himself. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was that dragon. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes in our inner space, that's what's hidden there as well. Is Because remember, like I was telling you, that's the space that connects you into your imagination. So this is... In that space, there's a beautiful thing. There are amazing things there, but there is there are also some horrible things that you haven't dealt with. So when and it's not even so bad much that it's bad. I don't want to say that those things are really bad. Those things are there to be teaching tools to teach you how to transform these particular lower energies into higher energies. You can't ignore your shadow self. You can't ignore your, your your dark self, your lower self. You can't ignore those parts of yourself. I don't know why you would want to. That would be an imbalanced person, okay? Mm-hmm. The, the experiences that you deem as unacceptable are the experiences that are making you who you are. I always say this with my clients. Now, what story you know, what good story you know starts with the – in the beginning, they were really happy, and everything stayed that way. The end. What story <laughs> you know go like that? <laughs> no, <I'm> none. <laughs> no story, because it's not a good story, okay? <laughs> the greatest people come from the most fucked up circumstances, okay? The, and I say fucked up because I mean fucked up. <laughs> the greatest people come from those circumstances, but they choose to overcome them. And it's in by choosing to overcome those things that you become the greatest. You don't become the greatest by never going through nothing. Right. So that's what those things are. They're there to propel you forward. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So... If we don't have any more questions, I want to share some energies about what's going on in my business over the next couple of weeks that we'll be having some opportunities for everybody to be able to heal. Um, first and foremost, <laughs> thanks. Mm-hmm. Oh, we have a question? Yeah, we have code. Oh, snap, we yep. got a question. Yeah, we have code 336. You're on the line. Peace, blessing. Peace, everyone. Peace. 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 Um, my question is, how do you find out what your purpose is? Mm, that's an amazing question. Um, in order to know your purpose, there has to be a lot of deep introspective thought that's going on. You cannot learn your purpose if you've never taken the time to really think on your life and on yourself and reflect. Uh, There are many ways to find the mundane answers of what your purpose is. So I could sit here and go, I could could put a spread together and start reading to you about different aspects of what your purpose is or different aspects of what your destiny is or different aspects of those things. But to be quite honest, Fear has really guided me to say that it's really important that we take the time to listen to our inner voice. Because nine times out of ten, our purpose is so obvious to everyone but ourselves because we're living it, even though we don't know that we're living it. Your purpose, if you love to cook, right, and you love to prepare food and help people through um, feeding them and all types, and that just brings you joy, nine times out of ten, your purpose is not going to be far from what it is that you love to do, okay? Your purpose isn't going to be to clean cars for a living if you love to cook, (laughs) 
<laughs> right. You know what I mean? So it's hidden in the aspects of your personality. So the thing is you have to really become quiet and still and observant of yourself to notice those things. So for me particularly, I can only speak on my experience. Um, from my experience, how I learned about really what my purpose was on this on this planet, which is to teach and to heal, okay? When I realized that I was around 17, I'm 24 now, so I was like, what, uh, seven years ago? Okay? So um, I was really, really sick, and I was in a lot of excruciating pain. And I had this inner realization where I realized I didn't even want my worst enemy to feel that way. That is now what I can identify as a form of ego death, okay? Um, And when I realized that I didn't want anybody to experience that, it was almost like an epiphany. And spirit began to speak to me. And they said, that's exactly what you are here on this planet to do. You are here to assist and help people in their healing process. So the way that you feel right now, nobody ever has to feel that way, okay? And that's how I began to realize that. But if I look at my life, since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a doctor. Since I was a little girl, I was up there uh, in church trying to preach (laughs) and teach people in my own way. So I've always been spiritual, I've always wanted to be a healer, and I've always loved to talk to people and teach them how to heal themselves. So those are elements that were already there, and I was already living, but it was just about having that inner realization that that, that's what I was meant to do with the rest of my life. So how you're going to begin to realize your purpose is by being very introspective and ask yourself, begin to ask yourself those questions. What makes me passionate? What lights my, the fire inside of me? Like, what makes me feel so amazing when I do these things? And follow that path. And even though it might not be immediately that path, it's going to be related to that. Okay? Hello? Yes, I hope that I'm here. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, kind of, sort of. That's not the question. I mean, that's not the I, way that you were I mean, looking it's for. just I like to do a lot of things, so I that I don't I don't know. I just kind of been trying to figure that out for the for the large mm-hmm. majority of my life, and so mm-hmm. I, if you need more guidance with that, I would definitely recommend um, talking to a spiritual uh, coach or a, a, a healer. Um, we actually have a service in my business called Soul Analysis Readings which is where we really sit down and break down to you the different energies that are inside of your aura and inside of your oversoul, like your higher self, and what that energy is dealing with. Um, So if you're interested in that type of energy, of of getting that type of guidance, we do offer those types of services as well. But honestly, like I said, the best thing that you could ever do is spend time with yourself and begin a meditation practice of understanding that. Because even throughout, not that you not that you can't have other people that are going to assist you along that path because you're always going to need assistance. But beyond that, you're going to have to become the greatest voice that you can trust. You're your own greatest guide. So that will be the energy that you will need to cultivate to sustain that journey. But, yeah, there's other people who can help you with that, um, and that particular service is one of the ways that you can be helped as well. Okay, thank you. No problem. Does anybody else have any questions? Any more questions for me? <laughs> well, I guess we talk. We'll okay. come back. All right, yeah. Uh, yeah, you were saying peeling back the uh, uh, certain things. and Like you said, yeah. you want the things order to be uh, uh, successful and everything and to mm-hmm. be, uh, you know, you have to go through some things, you know. It's just like uh, finding your life purpose. You know, mm-hmm. I've, I've been through some things I thought a long time ago, long time ago. And mm-hmm. uh, I thought I wanted to be, uh, before I, this is before I got conscious, you know. Mm-hmm. I, thought, I, I thought I wanted to be, uh, 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 make a career in the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. Spend three years in there, 
And I said, no, this is not my life purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, and I kept on going through some trials, and I, then I started awakening to consciousness. Then I started mm-hmm. getting more conscious. And then I, then I joined the Nation of Islam. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, spent some time with them for a while. Then I said, mm-hmm. no, this is not, no, this, I don't think this is where I want to be either. So then mm-hmm. I went, uh, I joined the uh, uh, the Rosicrucian Order, learned some mysticism. I got into mysticism, you know. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to deal with them for a while. I went all the way to the ninth degree, which is the highest degree in the Rosicrucian Order, the Omar, mm-hmm. you know, the ancient order order of the Rosicrucis. And uh, you mm-hmm. know, then I said I could have stayed in there, but I said no. I think I need to do something else. Mm-hmm. I think I need to continue to do something else. I joined mm-hmm. the Prince Hall Masonic Order. Mm-hmm. And then I they did, you know, most of the things I could accomplish there. I said, no, there's still something I need to do. Mm-hmm. Then, later on in years, then I uh, joined the, the Moorish Divine National Movement. Mm-hmm. And I've been here, and I've been here ever since. Mm-hmm. So, evidently, this must be my life purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, to uh, get nationalized by uh, Dr. Eileen and Kadira, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been with them for almost about going on seven years now, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm still with them. Heads, I'm still, you know, ooh, I mean, I'm st- just like when I first got into the uh, Morris Divine National Movement, I didn't mm-hmm. hardly wear a fez or a turban at the time. Mm-hmm. I didn't. But now, for the last two years, I still mm-hmm. am wearing turbans and faces a lot. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe it's I'm constantly growing into that spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 no, cause most people, you know, when they first get into something, they, they, uh, if, if whatever what you wear that represents that, whatever something that you're into, you usually wear it a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and, and then later on, then you, you won't wear it so much. Well, mm-hmm. it's the opposite with me. Mm-hmm. It's the opposite with me, you know. So I said, well, I think this is my life purpose, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because in the past when I was in the nation of Islam, I mm-hmm. didn't care for the Moorish science or temple. Mm-hmm. I didn't care mm-hmm. for the Moorish divine national movement. I know, it, but then when I got away from that, then when I finally shut up and listened. Mm-hmm. To what the sisters and brothers in the Moors science, uh, the Divine National Movement was talking about. And I mm-hmm. said, oh, okay, you know, that's what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. But then I never could. I, always, I thought I was black. You know, I always resent the idea that you're trying to tell me that I'm not black. You know, mm-hmm. but then when I, man, it, it shows you how life, when you go through yeah. the life changes. And when you go exactly. through life, it, sh- it, it shows you what mm-hmm. it can actually do to you. Mm-hmm. you what know, it can do never, for you, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, Grand Sheik now, you know, uh, they made me a chief. <coughs> you know, I mean, I, thought, I never thought I would ever be a part of anything like this, let alone, you know, being up and maybe, or like some people would say, up in rank like that. Mm-hmm. I never thought that, and I'm constantly, I'm constantly growing, constantly growing, constantly growing, and like you know, listening to you tonight, and uh, mm-hmm. what you are saying is right. Everything is right on point. Exactly, and what I love about your journey and you explaining this aspect of yourself is that you went through a journey. It's like you're never gonna arrive at this place where it's like, oh, this is it. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> like you mm-hmm. never arrive at the place. It's not the destination. It's the journey in and of itself, mm-hmm. and it's about unfolding the pieces. Each piece, each layer, each uh, scenario, each situation adds to the the complexity, adds to the flavor of who you are becoming and who you are growing into. So it's not so much to say, um, you know. What is my life purpose? Oh, it's this. 
boom, I'm done, I'm finished. No, it's right. a journey. It's always an ever oh, yeah. unfolding, ever uh, never ending journey. It really is. So yeah. as you begin to uncover those aspects of who you are, you know, it's going to still take you further and deeper and deeper. You're never going to stop. You're never going to no. go, this is the end, boom. Because if you're done, then you die. And even when you die, you're not done. <laughs> no, you're not. But uh, so that journey, I'm still going. going in the journey of, uh, it, it's like uh, well, 360 degrees. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going into this journey and uh, with this movement, because mm-hmm. there is so much to learn, so much to learn. And mm-hmm. I'm not going to... You know, when I die, uh, as we say, uh, pass into transition, uh, uh, I still won't learn anything. I won't learn at all. Mhm. Exactly. It's a never-ending process. It's a never-ending. It's like a, uh, it's like uh, a Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean full mm-hmm. of ink. You know. Mhm. You know, you 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 never. I mean, you'll never learn it. Oh. Mhm. Mhm. But that's that's the that's what keeps me going. Mhm. <coughs> you know. Definitely. Definitely. Same thing All with right. yourself. That's what keeps you going. Exactly. Because you don't you don't uh, I mean uh, uh uh you say how old, how old do you say you are 24? Mhm. Okay, I'm 64. So you got a long you definitely got a long journey. Mhm. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Mhm. A life experience, and you must learn from your experience. You yeah. must learn from them. Mm-hmm. Because if you it don't... Doesn't, honestly, it doesn't matter the physical years that you've been on the planet, if you learn how to learn from your life. Exactly. <laughs> some exactly. people some people are, you know, older in age, but they still haven't learned the lessons. No, no. They, they still haven't grow. done the work. They never grew up. Exactly, ne- exactly. You know, Exactly. So it's about learning. Old, you know. It's about learning how to learn. Humble exactly. yourself to the universe. It's there to teach you many things, many things. All right. So with that said, I'm going to move into some of the amazing things that I want to share with us, everybody here uh, about how they can learn and begin to heal and assist themselves and really move into that amazing heart chakra space um, and all of their chakras, as we were talking about a little bit earlier. So I am hosting a chakra workshop. Uh, it's going to be called the Chakra Awakening um, Workshop, and this is a really, really imperative thing. It's 21 days of wellness where you can join me on an amazing journey of spiritual awakening. Um, we will have included in this digital workshop individual chakra readings, chakra a chakra workbook, chakra crystals, herbs, and food guide, as well as 30% off uh, all of the products that we offer in Gemini brand, as well as weekly check-ins and group coaching. It's an amazing experience, and it begins on March 13th. So I have many different options of which you can opt in. If you want to learn more about that, please go to facebook.com slash Gemini Creations. All of the information is up there, G-E-M-I-N-E-Y-E Creations. Um, Or you can actually research Chakra Awakening Cleanse on Eventbrite. The energy is up there. The information is up there as well. Um, I would also like to let everybody on the line know that we have 30% off a birthday sale going on because my king's birthday is on Friday, and he's involved in the business as well. So um, he's going to be give, offering 30% off of all of his particular readings. That includes the soul analysis reading as mm-hmm. well as the general tarot card readings. That's 30% off with the code ANGEL999. And that's on Gemini Whole Health and Wellness dot Acuity Scheduling dot com. Gemini G E M I N E Y E Whole Health and Wellness dot Acuity Scheduling dot com. Um, and of course, I wanted to just give a little shout out and just let people know that our most popular soulmate twin flame readings are uh, still available. We had we've been running a little sale in February, but they're still available now for only twenty two dollars for forty minutes. 
And that's actually a really amazing breakdown of um, me showing you the story between you and your soulmate or twin flame and how the energies are are shifting and what needs to be healed in order for you guys to come into that physical union. So that service is available as well on Gemini Whole Health and Wellness dot Acuity Scheduling dot com as well. So that's the energy that I want to share with you all. If there are no more questions, we can close things out with uh some more uh energetic vibrations from the two of you. <laughs> so do we have any other questions? I don't know about that, Dali. Um, probably Dali, getting... you there? Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so I'm okay. going to... Okay, go ahead. You can, you can go ahead. <laughs> no, it's okay. I guess that's a no, so... Um, yeah, so like I was saying, you guys can check us out if you want to learn more about what I do, my coaching services, all of that information. Go to facebook.com slash Gemini Creations, G-E-M-I-N-E-Y-E Creations.com. You can reach out to me personally on my email, Queen T-A-E-Q-U-E-E-N at hotmail.com, or you can find us on Gemini Whole Health and Wellness at acuityscheduling.com as well. Uh, we're getting a lot of the information and the energy uh, back together around our website, so we will be, we will be building that up very soon. But in the meantime, in between time, the Facebook's always the best way to reach out to us. Okay. So, yes, it's been a pleasure speaking with yeah. you all, and it's been a pleasure sharing on this um, energy. And I just hope that everybody can take away a bit of uh, the message, which is really to learn to love yourself and to learn to love the journey of becoming who you are. Um, And I hope that that has blessed certain people and helped people on their healing journey and really uh, bringing some insight into uh, and awareness into them understanding who they are and where they can go. Okay. All right. Peace and blessings, y'all. Peace. Peace. Let me go. No. Peace be with you. Da Darlene? Okay. Well you all heard, uh don't forget the uh the the, the uh session. Don't forget the uh uh session from seventeenth to eighteenth to nineteenth of March. Uh in North Carolina and uh, Come on down, y'all. You know, I'm sure you have a good time and enjoy yourself. Like I said before, you deal with a lot of Reiki healing, uh, a lot of uh, spiritual healing, uh, a lot to learn about law, uh, a lot to learn about medicine and everything like that. And if you want to contact Dr. Eileen, you can contact him at uh, the phone number is 910 910- Three six four nine zero nine nine. I repeat again, his phone number is nine one zero three six four nine zero nine nine. Or you can get on the internet, and you can. Uh, it'll be www dot dr aline l bay dot com. www dot dr aline l bay dot com. All right, and also you might want to uh, purchase his book too, uh, the First World Order. You know, you still got some available. Contact him on that also. You know, like I said, it's March seventeenth, eighteenth, and nineteenth. We're going to commemorate the Spring Equinox. You know, this would be the conference we're going to have in North Carolina, down in Kelly, North Carolina. Like I say, you want some more information, you know, uh, remember, remember, I'm going to repeat it all again, 910-364-9099, 910-364-9099. And also, uh, com. www dot dr Eileen l bay dot com all right I guess it's about to shut out 
you know, I hope everybody enjoyed the uh, the conference, the lecture. So anyway, uh, get ready to sound out. And I say, Ahate Washita East. May my spirit and your spirit, spirit spring forth with the jaguar. All right. Bawasamat. That means goodbye. Peace. Peace, family.